Hi, hope you're feeling creative today because we're gonna create this cool animation today. I will try to explain step by step, but if you can follow all the way through, you can also download the entire project file, link in the description below. So let's get started. So let's create a new composition. Let's call this shapes. For the width, I'm going to make it 1000 and for the height, 1400, 24 FPS and 10 seconds. Press OK. Now let's create a new adjustment layer. Let's call this BG for background and also uncheck this box right here so we can see the fill color. All right, now let's search for a gradient ramp effect. This one, let's double click on it. And the start point will be right here in the top left corner and the end point in the bottom right corner. Right, and for the colors, for the start color, let's make it 660972 and for the end color 010042. Now let's duplicate this gradient ramp with Ctrl D and for this color I'm going to make it 6E7FFC and for the end color let's just make it 00066. Alright and for the blend with original let's increase this to 70 let's also take the start point and move it right here at the bottom and the end point let's move it right here so in this way we have a little bit of of blue color right here right something like this now let's select this background layer duplicate it with ctrl d let's swap all these colors so for the first gradient swap colors and for the second one now let's search for a cc radiator blur effect double click on this one and let's take this point and move it right here and for the amount i'm going to increase this to 50. And as you can see, we have some nice gradients with some forms, almost like some lights. Now let's create a new adjustment layer, actually a new solid. Let's make this pure black and let's call it vignette. Vignette. Now let's take the pen tool and let's create a mask around it. So I'm going to create a mask on the left part of our composition and finish with it right here let's smooth this up a little bit now let's press F for the mask feather and I'm going to make it 1000 then press T for opacity actually press M twice and let's decrease mask opacity to about 50% now let's take the ellipse tool, let's create a perfect circle by holding shift. Let's also put this in the middle. And now I'm going to select the fill color and I'm going to select no stroke actually. And for the fill I'm going to make it 1F8. A E3. Now let's select the ellipse path. Right click and convert this to Bezier path. Let's put a keyframe on the path. Let's go 22 frames forward. So 10, 20, 1, 2. Let's put again another keyframe. Then let's go 40 frames. So 10, 20, 30, 40. And let's put again a keyframe. And now for the for this keyframe in the middle, I'm just going to make this a rectangle. I'm also going to add some points right here. Let's also change this blue color so we can see it better. All right. And now we have from circle to triangle and then back to circle. 
Now let's select all these keyframes. Let's press F9. Then let's go to the graph editor. Make sure you're on the speed graph. And here what I'm gonna do is select this point. Actually select this one and then click on this, uh, which is this one. Convert selected keyframes to auto Bezier. And now I'm going to modify a little bit this handles right here. And let's see how it goes. All right. Now let's press P for position. But before that, let's rename this layer to shape one. All right. Now right click on the position uh, property and then let's separate the dimensions. And we're only going to animate the Y position. But first of all, let's put this in the center. All right. Maybe move it a little bit lower, something like this. All right, and let's put a keyframe on the Y position. Let's press you to see all the keyframes. Then let's put a keyframe again here and the other one here. Now select all these keyframes, press again F9 to easy ease those. And let's go to the graph editor. But before that, this for this keyframe in the middle, Let's move the position right here, right? Now go to the graph editor. Let's select the value graph and let's modify the handles a little bit. Let's drag this to the right. Maybe this one. Let's make it auto Bezier. Right, let's also take this one, drag it to the left a little bit. All right, and let's see how it goes. All right, now let's create some animation for the scale. So press S for the scale property. And let's put a keyframe right here. Then let's go 26 keyframes. So 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's put another keyframe. Actually, no, this keyframe should be in the same place where these two keyframes are. So one keyframe at the end, one here and one here. And for the first keyframe, let's decrease the size, maybe 20% or 26, something like this. And for the last keyframe, it should be the same as the first keyframe. Now select all these keyframes, press F9 for easy ease. Let's go again to see the value graph and let's modify these handles a little bit. And let's see how it goes. Maybe I can modify this path a little bit because I don't like this curvature like he right here so let's see how it looks now okay i think it's much better and also we can rotate it just a little bit Let's see. Yeah, all right. Now let's add some rotation. So Shift and R for rotation. And let's add a keyframe at the beginning and one keyframe at the end. And here I'm just gonna write here one. And in this way, we are going to have a full rotation. Let's select these two keyframes. F9 for easy ease. Let's go to the graph editor. Let's select the speed graph. And for this one, let's make it, yeah, something like this. Let's see how it goes. 
all right looks pretty good now let's add some effects so for this i'm going to use the shade travel plugin you can download it for free i'm going to leave a link in the description so i'm going to select the noise shading option the first one let's toggle this layers and let's select only the first one because all we need is this one and for the distance let's make it about nine for the noise amount let's make it 45 and for the frame rate let's increase this to 8 contrast let's make it 65 and for the shading angle i think i'm going to make it about 130 all right now let's put a keyframe on the softness properties let's press you to see the property and a keyframe in the middle one keyframe at the beginning and another one right here at the end and for the first keyframe the softness should be just about 50 or even lower maybe 40 and here at the top let's make it let's see about 120 something like this and for the last keyframe let's just copy the first one so ctrl c and ctrl v now select these keyframes press f9 for ease and let's see how it looks all right now let's add another effect so let's search for light sweep right now for the intensity i'm going to make it 31 can you see this line right here this light sweep i really like this effect so i'm going to use it all right so for the intensity 31 and this one the edge intensity will be 64 and the edge thickness let's make it maybe 5.1 so now hold option or alt if you're on windows and click on this stopwatch near the center property and what i'm gonna do is i will link i will take this peak whip and i will link it to the y position value and then i will take again this peak whip and just link it to our first value right here so this transform that y position let's copy this and let's move it right here and this effect will be stored in the temp value and then we have temp and transform that y position so what this will do let me explain so now the light sweep will actually be visible all the time because it will follow the y position movement of the shape layer so you can see it right here maybe increase the intensity you can see this point right here that it's following the y position of the shape layer and if i wouldn't have written this expression then the light sweep would be visible only here at the top and i want it to be visible all the time all right now let's put a keyframe on the direction property let's press u again and for the direction let's put a keyframe at the beginning and one at the end and here at the top let's make it minus 50 let's also move it a little bit to the left right and here at the bottom let's make it zero so we have zero then we have minus 50 and here we want a full rotation so let's make it minus 1x and zero right here so let's see how it looks all right not bad maybe decrease a little bit the intensity Let's make it 35 
35. All right. Now let's add some glow. So let's search here for the glow effect. And for this one, for the threshold, I'm going to choose 43. Then for the radius, 39. For the glow intensity, 0 0.5. Then let's make these A and B colors. Let's switch this to triangle B and B. And for the color A, let's make this green. Something like this. And for the color B, let's make it some kind of blue. All right. Now let's put a keyframe on the color phase. Let's press U again. So move this keyframe at the beginning and let's put another keyframe at the end. And for this one, let's just create one full rotation. So one X right here. All right, it looks pretty good. Now let's also add some radial shadow. So radial shadow. And for the color, let's choose black. For the opacity, let's create some keyframes. And also let's put a keyframe on the light source and another one on the projection distance. Now for the softness, let's make it 40. Now let's press U again. So U and for the opacity, but first of all, let's move all these keyframes at the beginning. Now for the opacity, the first one should be zero. Then here should be 10. And then at the end should be just like the first keyframe. Right, F9 for easy. Let's go to the graph editor. And let's just modify the sandals a little bit. All right, something like this. Now let's keyframe the light source. So when it's here at the top, the light source should be about here. Let's just zoom in a little bit so we can see better. Let's also increase the opacity a little bit. So again, the light source Let's put this right here. Let's actually make it 250 and 220 and move it a little bit lower, maybe 280, something like this. And now for the first keyframe, let's just move this. Also, let's increase the opacity so we can see what we're doing. Right, so let's make it 50 and 1000. Actually, let's just move it right here. All right, and now for the last keyframe, let's just copy the first one. Now let's also modify the projection distance. So the first one should be only 2.5. Then in the middle, should be about 10. And then for the last one, let's just copy the first keyframe. Let's also press F9 for easy. Let's go to the graph editor. And again, let's modify this handles a little bit. Something like this. Now let's go again to the light source property. Also F9 on this. And let's modify the graph editor. All right, something like this. And now let's also decrease the opacity to zero and then 10 here. And then we have zero at the end. So let's see how it looks. All right, we can barely see it, but it's enough. All right, now let's create some shadow for this shape. So let's take the rectangle tool. Let's double click on this one. 
let's call this shadow let's move it below the shape one and now let's take the ellipse tool and make sure you select this button right here because we want to create a mask so let's create a mask all right and let's put a keyframe on the mask pad and also on the feather and opacity now let's press you let's also press you for the shape on to see where we have the keyframes and now the first pad should be right here let's also make this black then when it's at the top let's make this look more like a triangle all right and at the end let's just copy the first keyframe now f9 to is this and what i'm gonna do i will copy the graph editor with this plugin and i will paste it right here and now i have the same animation as the path of the shape one all right now for the feather so let's create a keyframe here and also on here so at the beginning let's increase this to 10 and in the middle let's make it 50 and here for the end let's just copy the first keyframe let's ease these keyframes let's go to the value graph and let's also modify a little bit these points right here these handles all right and now for the opacity just make it 30 and actually here when it's at the top it's 30 and here maybe make it 50 and also at the end let's make it 50 and let's copy the graph editor for the mask feather and let's paste it right here all right and let's see how it looks I think it's too much maybe 50 is too much let's make 35 and also here 35 let's see again how it looks yeah all right looks pretty good and now let's create some little stars right here at the top of the of this shape make sure you don't have anything selected let's take this star tool and let's just create a star and for the fill i'm going to select the first color this almost white and the second one the same and the third one this pale violet all right and we don't need any stroke but i'm going to to move this gradient a little bit just so we have this pale color at the extremities of the star all right and i'm going to select s for the scale let's go 10 frames another keyframe let's go seven frames and another keyframe zero here for the scale also zero here let's ease those okay and also let's press shift r and let's write here time multiply by 1000 and in this way we have a little bit of rotation all right let's now duplicate this one let's move it here and for the scale let's make it 140 or it's too big let's make it actually 90 and for the rotation i'm going to choose 800 here and let's also 
offset these keyframes a little bit. Six keyframes here, right? And let's also create another one. Let's move it right here. And this one will be only 60%. And for the rotation, let's make it time multiply by 600. And let's move it a little bit to the left. And for the keyframes, so let's go seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And for this one, let's go nine frames for the last one. All right. And let's see how it looks. Maybe let's move this a little bit to the left. All right, looks pretty good. Something like this. All right, now before going further, let's rename this to star one, the second one star two, and the third one star three obviously. Now let's create a new adjustment layer. Let's search for a noise effect and let's make this squared and maybe 7%. And now as an optional task we can also add some echo effect to our shape layer. So Let's go right here and this one let's make this 0 0.024 and for the number of echoes let's go to 10 you can see it right here starting intensity one and decay let's make this 0 0.47 and in this way we have this trail of shapes following the original one let's also choose this maximum but be careful because this effect is very power consuming. So now if I press play, you can see that it renders much slower than before when we didn't have this effect. But it looks cool with this one, so I just stick with it. So this is the final result. I hope you're able to follow this all the way through. And if not, you can ask me in the comments or you can download the full project files from the link in the description below. Until next time, you can also check this cool video right here.